yeah, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> and then you've got obviously the Munro's at the back there. Oh, I'm right, I'll need to do this again. So hello everyone, Renegade Scott, and thank you very much for joining me on this video today. I've been out for a bit of a hike that I'm going to show you later in this vlog, and it's a trip where I was out testing some new clothing that I'm potentially going to use for the upcoming winter instead of what I traditionally take, and I'm going to go through the reasons why I've decided to try it. But first off, thank you very much for the comments in my latest films in regards to the Nan Shepherd production idea I had. Uh, very helpful and thank you very much for, as I say, the kind comments you've left. Also thank you for the, the comments in regards to my injury or my health issue I had with my shoulder. Uh, basically I had calcified tendonitis which uh, is very painful. That's one of the worst things I've experienced in my life to date. It was absolutely horrendous. And it feels a lot better now, it's not sore or stiff, but it's still kind of there. And I actually had to go and, well, I went through to Falkirk to see a specialist group to get a bit of treatment and a steroid injection. And I actually filmed that as a vlog, which surprised the guy when I asked him, do you mind if I vlog this? So just for a bit of fun and show you the scan as a bit of interest, I'm going to put that up just now first and then we'll get back into the this gear review as such. Calci calcification and then this is the outline of the, the tendon but then just running over the top of it you've got a black line if we just take that away you'll reveal the black line that's the bursa and we we think that uh, often the pain is created when these calcific deposits infiltrate into the bursa and it creates quite an inflammatory response so I'll just record that so is a, a width there of 16.4 millimetres by 9.6 millimetres. So for all intents and purposes, one and a half, one and a half by one centimetres. And um, this is towards the outside of the body. So my needle, you'll see just coming into shot here with the needle tip clearly in view. We'll just slowly advance that, keep the needle tip in view. And we're getting it directly into that subacromial bursa, as it's called, right on top of your calcification. And you'll see that if you look down there, the fluid actually just infiltrating because that bursa connects all the way around. Okay. Yes, so thank you very much to the people through at uh, Falkirk there. I'll, I'll leave a link below to them uh, if you ever need any kind of sports treatment like that in Scotland and you're close by to Falkirk, uh, very, very helpful. Now, kit for the winter. Normally when I'm out in the hills, I take multiple layers. So I'll have a thermal layer and then maybe a mid layer and then I have my, you know, I'll take like my down jacket. And nine times out of 10, you'll see my films that I'm wearing a, a soft shell. I always wear that, and then if it decides to chuck it down, or if it's quite heavy in the snow or anything like that, or just really, really cold as well, I've got my kind of heavy Gore-Tex uh, outer shell to wear. Now, I've weighed all these items of clothing, and it comes in at 1.85 kilograms, which is quite a lot of weight in, in clothing that you're taking when you're out either wild camping or hiking. And I'd seen a few posts in the past, and I've been thinking about it for a few years on trying a, a one jacket system. And it's based on, it's a bit like the Buffalo system. Some people might have heard where you have a jacket, and I've got this one here from Montaigne. And it's a Pertex outer shell, but it has a pile lining on the inside, this heavy pile. And they kind of class it as a one-stop shop jacket where you just wear this all the time and you can vent with these side zips and things like that if you start to get too hot. And this one from Montaigne is the Extreme Smock and it's been going for many, many years and if you look at the forums, it's a 50-50 kind of thing, love-hate with this type of jacket or this jacket as well. Uh, some people rave about it and some people just hate it because it's just too warm. So I decided to head out into the Cairngorms for a, a, a bit of a, a hike 
to try and get to the summit of a couple of uh, Munro's and I knew it was going to be a fairly long day and with some seriously cold temperatures. So it would give me the ideal opportunity to try this out and I have to say it performed very, very well. A really, really warm jacket. I did sweat initially with it but with the wind as well you kind of, it does, it does wick away the sweat. It's quite an impressive jacket, it's hard to explain and when I normally go out, I'm prone to not changing layers when I shoot. When I get too hot, I just keep going because I can't be bored taking my rucksack and everything off to change layers. So for me, something like this might be actually ideal where you just wear it all the time. But we'll head up to this Munro here, I think it's Ben Vreck, I'm sure it is, and we'll see what it's like up at the summit, and obviously it'll be a nice test for this jacket. So I've just stopped to have another break and I'm going to have this uh, white chocolate flapjack for a bit of energy before I head on up to the summit of this next Munro. I'm kind of in the middle of no man's land at the moment but the views all round are just beautiful and there was a bit of a pond as I was coming along there with uh, little patches of snow so it looked quite nice. It, it looked, well I thought it made a nice composition so I took a photograph of it but yeah just got the Munro's all the way around. It was just yeah, a really remote location. I'm glad I've got this jacket because it's really, really warm. Really warm. But yeah, I need to get battered on. It's, uh, the clocks went back here in the UK, so it gets dark earlier, and it's about one o'clock, so I really need to get pushed on, get that done, and off and onto the trail, and then back to the car. Well, that was an experience and a half. I couldn't film at the top there because my battery had run out, so I was charging it back up on the GoPro on the way back down. But that was the first top I was at over there. And then that's Ben Huren, or Ben Huren. And it was a, yeah, Huren a, Huren a walk. That was an absolute cracker a walk, coming right across there and up. Eh, really boggy and a lot of kind of peat hags at bits. Uh, yeah, peach and behind. I think it's pronounced Ben Vahan with the tours up there and the dusting of snow. Now it's getting late, half two. It's going to get dark shortly. I need to get back down onto the trail because the walk back out and to basically back to the D, that's about seven miles back out at least. Oh dear. Why did I put myself through this? Uh, jacket performed fantastic so far. Uh, really, really warm. So I'll head back down and we'll have a chat on the way out. Maybe about a third of the way out now. Oh, feeling the pace, as always. Something that uh, caught my eye here when I was walking along, which I couldn't believe, is, uh, I don't know if you can see this, the toilet paper and somebody's poo just to the side there. Now, look around how much heather and grass and, you know, could have went anywhere. No, got to do it right there. Some people... But anyway, heading out and heading home.
I enjoyed that walk, it was really, really nice. This bit always gets me every time I come past this, with the trees and the boulders. It's been interesting to see what it was like many moons ago when there was you know, loads and loads of trees all throughout here. But that's it. Time to get battered on again. Having another break and just sitting next to some old trees here. It was just a nice rock, nice flat rock to sit on. Uh, I'm at the 14 mile mark and I've been on the go for something like seven and a half hours. And I've still got a good bit to go back to the car. This is why uh, cycling in a lot of this is beneficial. But I don't have a bike, I don't have a mountain bike. Uh, yeah, it would save the legs on a fair bit of the journey. And uh, when I'm giving you these distances and times, it's not for bragging rights, it's just to give you an idea of what's involved. But for us uh, average mortals, yeah, it's a long hike, so be prepared. Bring plenty of food, water and uh, emergency kit. Just don't come out into these kind of hills, especially this time of year. And uh, yeah, without any kit or experience because you'll come unstuck. But this jacket, yeah, great jacket. Lots of reviews of it online. Check them out. Uh, I'm not going to go into great depth about it, but for me, I'm going to try this winter and see if it does work. As uh, well as I'm hoping, to be honest. And also, I'm wanting to see what it's like when it's really, really wet. That's the one issue with it: is that it will gain weight, <laughs> obviously, once it starts to absorb water. So I'm curious to see just how much water it does absorb and how that affects its performance. And also which I didn't mention, is i got the salopettes that match it. Uh, so I'm going to try that once the snow is really kicking. So some bits of kit I've recently got, I'm going to try out over the coming months and see how I get on with them. So a bit of a short vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, until next time, take care.